California, a state known the world over for its beautiful and diverse scenery, leadership in the technology sector, muscly governors, and laid-back beaches. Okay, maybe a little too laid-back. But California has always been known for a pioneering spirit, and it's not skimping one bit on pioneering into the 21st century with the California High Speed Rail Authority, the largest transportation project in modern American history. The project going on in California has been a dream since the 70s when Governor Jerry Brown, at the time one of the youngest governors of the state, promoted the construction of such a system. Studies and commissions were set up in the 90s to further research on how the dream could become a reality. The reality came to be in 2008 when Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and the people of California passed Proposition 1A to fund the California High Speed Rail Authority, nearly $10 billion for the project. Today, Jerry Brown is again the governor of California, albeit much older, and the authority is constructing on what will eventually become a more than 520 mile long system between San Francisco and Anaheim, California. The high speed trains traveling on the system would be able to reach top speeds of 220 miles an hour and get you from either end to the other in just 2 hours and 40 minutes. This is phase 1 of the project that they're hoping to complete by the year 2029. Okay, alright, 2029 sounds like a long way off, however, they are constructing it now. Within phase one of the project are sections to be completed, the first one being Merced to Bakersfield in the Central Valley. California HSRA expects this to be completed by 2019 and will let Amtrak use it until the segment is fully completed for HSR use in 2022. The project is far bigger and ambitious than the one in Texas, which is building a 240 mile line between its two major cities of Dallas and Houston. And unlike the Texas and Florida projects, which are both privately funded, California's project is a mix of state and federal funding. The California HSRA has stated, however, that the project, once in operation, will be able to run through privatized operation and will be required by the laws in the proposition to run without the use of any government subsidies. Similar to how the Japanese high-speed rail system got its start and how it has become profitable and successful today. With such an enormous and ambitious project, it has become not only the cornerstone of modern infrastructure building for some in America, but also the epitome of a boondoggle to others. Here are the three big myths you're going to hear opponents of the project push around. It's a wasteful boondoggle! Yes, the project is expensive, $68 billion expensive, and yes, that is yours and my taxpayer dollars. And honestly, I was not a big fan of the project because of the price and constant controversy. However, even me being someone that sides with more conservative politics sees that this project is not only absolutely necessary, but a far better deal than building a highway or more airports. This is really planning for the future and um, you know, if we were to try to get that same level of capacity with those other modes, such as the highways, such as uh, airline, you know, it would cost two to three times as, as much, not be as environmentally sensitive, sensitive and sustainable as the, the high-speed rail system. In the long term, California's population is only going to increase to 60 million people by 2050. That's more than almost double than what it has so far its infamous traffic will only double or triple as well. And the only solution that the opposition can think of is adding more roads and airports. Short-term vision in the United States that we know doesn't work and doesn't make a profit. It's an environmental boondoggle! This is the weakest argument that the opposition has created, but it's often lanced out on the front. First off, railroads only take up a fraction of what an automobile road would take which would be the alternative if the project does not get built. The trains will be fully electric and be able to reduce the amount of CO2 in the state by up to 300,000 metric tons in just the first year of operation. That's about the same as taking 53,000 cars off the road. The ease of access to transit from the stations also allows passengers to use other modes of transportation that use less CO2, such as trams, trolleys, metros, and buses. 
It's a boondoggle for the state and employment! High speed rail doesn't come out of thin air. It requires construction workers, engineers, planners, and when in operation, conductors, maintenance, and stewardess, etc., etc. We've already seen HSR increasing productivity even for a whole region. The World Bank reported just recently that Guangdong, China saw an estimated 10% increase in average business productivity after bullet trains were built in the region. California HSRA is expected to require almost 66,000 jobs annually and create 450,000 permanent jobs by the end of construction. The LA to San Francisco route is also calculated to rake in $2.23 billion in net revenue. Indeed, a good fraction of these numbers can be inflated, and with infrastructure projects, they usually are. But looking at the data in Europe and Asia, when it comes to the companies that make a profit and the amount of jobs made, high-speed rail is a win, win, win. Win done right. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more and support the High Speed Rail American Club, be sure to subscribe. Also, join us in the next step of the rail revolution and pledge today to the next installment of the American Train, right now on Kickstarter. We'll see you all next time.